this video I'm going to be working on creating a symbol for an evergreen tree. And as we can see from our assignment, we're required to draw in an um, evergreen tree symbol at 15 feet wide. So again, I'm going to start by making sure that I am on my art layer. And I'm going to draw a 15 foot uh, spread tree and I'm just going to click once on my ellipse making sure that the constraint is selected. And since I'm at eighth inch scale, I'm just gonna write in 15 over eight. And now I have my 15 foot spread tree. And for this symbol, I wanna make sure I'm using the same size crosshair as the tree I'd had drawn previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this symbol that I have up here. And then under my symbol palette, I'm going to hit break link to symbol because right now I, I cannot edit this symbol without it affecting all the other symbols on my artboard. I can also do that by just right clicking on the tree while it's selected and hitting break link to symbol. Now it's back to just being a regular, uh, the regular artwork that I had created originally. And I can access uh, the cross that's in the middle there. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that over here. And delete this guy. And just making sure that cross is still grouped, I'm going to select those two. And actually right now I can see that um, these two items are in two separate layers. And the way I know that is because this is green and this is blue. And I want to make sure that they're on the same layer. So if I go back and check in my layers panel, um, what happened was that when I broke up the symbol, it just went into a sub into a sub layer. So I'm just going to click on that cross, drag it back into the art layer, and now everything is on my green layer, which is the art layer right here. That looks good. And then I'm going to go under align and making sure that again align selection is highlighted just going to align to the center both ways. Okay. Now since I want this to be an evergreen tree, I want to uh, work on drawing a custom uh, brush to apply to this tree stroke. So I'm just going to zoom into this area a little bit more. And I'm just going to do a very simple brush. And what I'm going to do is I just want it to look kind of spiky. So I'm just going to, with my pen tool, I'm just going to click three times, making sure that these two guys align with one another. And just click. And I'm going to work on that stroke a little bit. I'm going to go to the stroke panel. And I want to make sure I have rounded uh, edges selected here. And rounded corners. And what that does is that you can see the difference here. If I have a, a miter corner or a miter join, then this is a really sharp line and I want to soften that a little bit. So I'm going to do that. The same, the same thing with this guy, the round cap. Um, if I switch back to just the butt cap, you can see that it's the square edge. And I think that the the rounded cap does a better job at blending when you're repeating the brush pattern. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new brush pattern with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open my brushes palette. And first I'm going to just delete... Undo, um, with none of the geometry highlighted, I'm going to delete all the brushes that are there right now. Just highlight all of them and hit the trash bucket. And then with this highlighted, I'm going to just drag it into here. And you can see a blue line in here and a plus sign saying if I want to add it, I'm just going to drop it there. And now the new uh, brush dialog box comes up. Now I'm going to want to make this into a pattern brush and hit OK. And I'm going to call this Evergreen Brush. 
And what's really nice about Illustrator is that it will automatically create the corners for you. So all I care about is the inside corners and the outside corners. And I'm going to go with auto centered and see what that looks like. Actually, maybe auto between. And this, and I can kind of preview it in here, but the best way to see it is when it's applied on an actual object. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Hit OK. And now I have that available under my brushes. Now I'm going to select my tree uh, geometry and then select the evergreen brush that I just created. And what you can see here that's happening is that this is how it's applying the brush. First, please notice that um, the pattern brush will always go to the outside edge. And what I mean by that is that, let me just bump up the stroke on this, is that this vector that I've drawn right here um, it won't it will actually read the thickness of that stroke so the next pattern will start just outside of that stroke regardless of where the vector is so that's why I'm getting a little bit of a gap in here just keep that in mind that's how illustrator just generates these pattern brushes um, the other thing that I want you to notice is that let me just make that back into a one point stroke. Is that um, the brush is being applied at the center line of that circle vector. And this might be okay in some instances. However, when you're trying to be very specific about um, the scale of a plant symbol, sometimes you don't want it to overlap beyond the size that you, you've already determined. In this case, we've determined that this tree is 15 feet. And if I put this plant symbol on a plant, there's going to be edges here that are going to be popping out beyond those 15 feet, and they're going to make the tree symbol appear bigger than it is. So if I actually want um, this to be contained inside that circle, I just have to be cognizant that when I'm drawing, or when I'm creating my pattern brush, um, it will be applied at the center line of whatever art I'm importing in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to make this rectangle be basically a box that aligns exactly with the geometry that I have. And now with it selected, I'm going to go under Object Transform Scale and I'm going to go under Non-Uniform Transformation and vertically I'm going to make it twice as big as it is now. Just preview it and hit OK and I'm going to select both the brush and my new rectangle and align it to the bottom. The reason I'm doing that is that when I import this brush, now the center line of this entire artwork will actually be at the tip, um, at the point of, uh, of this symbol. And since I don't want to have to see this box, I'm just going to make both the stroke and the fill transparent. So I'm going to have this transparent box right here and I'm going to repeat the same process. I'm going to go to my brushes palette and I'm going to drag and drop that inside of here. Create a new pattern brush and again create my corners the way I want them and call this evergreen tree 2 and hit OK. Now I have two different pattern brushes in here. If I again go and highlight my tree geometry, I can switch from this one that's highlighted right now to this one that I just created. And you can see how now it's perfectly aligned inside of my circle. And that's really what I want to see for, um, for most of my geometries. In the next video, we're going to be um, color rendering this tree and also adding shadows.